Hi, good morning, friends. How are you doing today? It's a beautiful Sunday morning, and it is the first Sunday of the month of November 2021. Are you excited to be in church? Oh, yes, I know you're excited to be in church because I am excited to be here again, you know. And did I say I missed you? Yes. I missed every one of you out there. So how have you been? Hope you've been good children and hope you've been having a great time both at school and at home. And for those of you who had me time over the week, hope you had fun and hope you rested well and you're energized to resume school the next week. All right, it's another beautiful Sunday morning as you know and this Sunday morning is going to be one of the best Sunday morning you've ever had. All right, so before we continue, we have to close our eyes to pray. You remember that prayer first, right? Yes, we have to pray first, then as soon as we finish praying, we go into um, today's service proper. Is that okay? Yes, so if that is okay, can we please all rise up from wherever you are right now, close your eyes and put your two hands together and let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for yet another beautiful morning. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your protection over our lives. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for our friends. And we thank you for everyone around us. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Father, we thank you for your grace upon each and every one of our lives. We ask, O oh Lord, today that as we go into today's service, Father, your word, O oh Lord, would be given unto us today in the name of Jesus. Father, speak through me and let your children be blessed today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we know that this and more you would do for us and lives will be elevated, lives will be impacted via today's message in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And somebody shout amen again amen all right so after our prayer oh did i mention that today is the first sunday of the month oh yes i did from the beginning today is the first sunday of the month and we are going to be taking you on a series um, of topic uh, about the israelites you remember we paused some time and then um, we continued with um, the, the, the commandments and we've been doing the commandments, you know, we've taken a, lot, a part of the Ten Commandments. But today we are going to be doing something quite different. We have moved from the commandments a bit and now we are coming to talk about something that is really interesting. Now we are going to continue from the story, you know, of the Israelites and, you know, all that but I'm not going to spill out yet. Do you know why? Because we have to go and shake our body, shout praise the Lord and worship. So after praise and worship, we are going to come back and we are going to dive right into the goodies that we have for today. I am sure that you're already excited about what we are going to be teaching today, even though you don't know what it is yet. But I tell you, it's going to be pretty interesting and you do not want to miss that. So before we start that, I want you to wear your dancing shoes, get ready because you're going to be screaming, you're going to be shouting and you are going to be singing praises unto the Lord. Are you ready? Yes. I'm also going to be dancing from here. So I want you guys to put on your dancing shoes and let us go and praise the Lord. All right, let's go and praise the Lord, kids. This is the light of my Shine. This is the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. 
Worship. Did you enjoy today's praise and worship? Yes, I did. I really did enjoy today's praise and worship, and I am sure that you did enjoy today's praise and worship too. All right, so let's get into today's um today's message properly. But before we do that, I want you to sit down like a princess that you are. Yes, and like the prince that you are, because you're sitting right in your father's house and you want to enjoy the message that your heavenly father has right in store for you today so are you all seated beautifully all right that's awesome great now that you're seated i can go into today's message i don't want you to get distracted if you're at the age where you can read your bibles i want you to pick up your bibles so that you can read alongside with me but if not Never mind, I'm going to be here to read for you. You can also see some of the, you can also look at the screen because um, the test will be right there at the screen. All right. So today we are talking about a special person, a special character from the Bible. So you remember when the children of Israel got to the wilderness, there was someone that was so special that God said that him and his family and the younger generation will see the, the, and they will see the promised land. Do you remember what that person is? Huh, let's think. Hmm. You can't remember? Oh, let's try. Okay, maybe I should give you a clue. His name starts with J. Anybody still trying to guess? Okay, another clue. After J, O. Uh, 
You're not giving me the real answer. Okay. Let me spell his name for you. Then I want you to scream his name right from where you're sitting. Right from where you're seated, I would want you to scream his name. So this is the spelling of his name. J-O-S-H-U-A. Joshua! Yes, we are going to be talking about Joshua today. You remember that God promised him that he is going to see the promised land and he is going to lead the people of Israel right to their promised land. So today our topic is titled Joshua leads the people. Joshua leads the people. Again, Joshua leads the people. Yes, Joshua leads the people. And our, today's um, test is taken from the book of Joshua chapter 1. I would love for us to read that Bible verse together so that you would understand what, um, so that you understand um, the context of what we're going to be talking about today. So I want you to grab your Bibles if you can read. But if you know you cannot read, like I said, it's okay. Just sit down. I'm going to read to your hearing and you would also see it on your screen. All right. So give me one minute to grab my Bible so we can read together. Uh, today's verse is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1, then all the way to 18. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1, up until 18. Okay? And I am reading from the New King James Version, and it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over, there, go over this Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and to this Lebanon, as far as the great rivers, all the land of Etiite and all the great sea towards the, towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I would not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the Lord which I swore to, the, to, their, to their father to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, has commanded you. Do not turn from, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your ways prosperous, and then you will have good success. I have not commanded you, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provision for yourself. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go to possess the land which the Lord your God has given to you to possess. So I'm going to stop there right at 11. Okay, and um, let me just explain all that I have been saying. Now, God gave a commandment to Joshua saying to him that, I am going to be with you. Do you remember that Moses was the one who led the children, the children of Israel out of Egypt. He brought them out of 
Egypt. I'm sure you remember that story, guys. Yes, it brought the children of Israel out of Egypt from their suffering. I mean, they were really suffering in Egypt. And God asked Moses to lead them out of in, in Egypt. And of course, Moses did. Moses led the children out of Egypt. And when they did, they got to, you know, the, the wilderness and all that. That Remember that story, right? Great. Now, because of the complaining of this people, because of, the, because of their um, unbelief, because they didn't trust God enough, God was angry with them and God put a curse on them saying that the older ones would of course save the younger ones and some of them would die in the wilderness. They would not get to the land that the Lord has promised them. Then Moses passed on because of course it was of the older generation. And yes, I think that God did that so that they would not bring their old mindset to the land that the Lord had promised them. Imagine if they had brought their old mindset to that land. That means that they would not enjoy the promises of God. They would still enter into that land complaining, grumbling, and doing all sorts of things. But because God didn't want that to happen, God gave them a new leader. Moses was old and he passed on. Now, Joshua became the new leader. And Joshua was meant to take these people from wherever they were, you know, from the wilderness to the land that the Lord has promised them. Imagine you were Joshua at that time, still young. Wouldn't you have been scared that these people who are always complaining, these people who are stubborn, these people would not even listen to you when you talk to them. God is now saying to you that you'll be the one to lead them into the land. I am sure some of you would have been scared. Maybe I would have been scared too. Yeah? But... Joshua was a good leader. Joshua obeyed God. And God told him that be strong and courageous for I will be with you. And wherever you step your feet, wherever the sole of your feet steps on, you will take possession over such land, such place. That means that God gave them a very good promise. Do you know what that means? That means that if they go to America, they would prosper. They would take over America. If they come to Songo Tedo here, they would take over Songo Tedo. That is what that meant. When God said, wherever the sole of your foot, you know, should tread on, you would take possession over such place. That was what God was trying to say to them. That wherever they step their feet, they would take, they would take possession over such a place. That means that whatever they do, they will be blessed. God would bless them. Imagine if it was the old Israel um, Israelites. Do you know that they wouldn't have believed? They would have still complained because something would have made them complain. But these ones, they trusted God. And it was because Joshua was a good leader. Joshua was a good leader because Joshua himself trusted God. Joshua knew that those who wait on the Lord, they shall do exploits. It was his every word. He was so brave. He was not scared of anything. Even when others didn't trust God, Joshua trusted God. Joshua believed in God and he believed that there was a place that God was really taking them to. And it came to pass that they were going to go to that land that God has promised them. So even though others missed it, the younger generation still got to that place that God wanted them to go to. 
So let's bring it back home to today's reality and what happens in most of our homes. There is a reward for being obedient. A great reward for being obedient. For every time you obey God's will, for every time you obey what mommy and daddy is asking you to do, for every time you obey what your teacher have asked you to do, there is a proper reward for it. There is always a reward for it. So obedience is key. Obedience is something which you don't play with. Mm, yes. Obedience is something that we should take seriously, especially when it has to do with the word of God. So when God says, do not do this, then that means that you won't do it. And sometimes God speaks to our parents to talk to us. God speaks through our parents. The same way God is speaking through me right now to talk to you. So, when our parents, or rather teachers, or, you know, elderly people tell us to do the things that are right, because there is a reason for them to tell you that, else there will be no need for you to do it anyways. But, it is important to believe God. For example, you're trusting God for something so badly. It could be as little as it could be as little as having a new school bag. Right? It could be as little as having a new school bag. And you're just wondering, oh no, mommy, I want a new school bag. I am tired of the one that I am using. Why can't you just give me a new one? You have only asked mommy for a school bag. You have asked daddy for a school bag. Have you asked God for it? Have you prayed about it? Have you told God that God, I need a new school bag. So provide for mommy, provide for daddy so they can give me a new school bag or they can buy me a new school bag. Sometimes it is important that we trust that God will be able to do these things. There is nothing that is too small or too little for God to do. Nothing. So when you ask God and you believe in your heart that God would do it, God would do it somehow. I'll take home for today. One, be strong and courageous. God wants us to be strong and courageous. Why does he want us to be strong and courageous? Why did he kept telling Joshua, be strong, be strong? That is because sometimes fear puts us in a box. Fear has a way of putting us in a box that we would not be able to express ourselves. There are times you go to school and someone is doing something nasty to you. Then you get scared. Because of that, you don't want to go to school anymore. But God is saying to you that you should be strong. He didn't just tell Joshua that. He's also saying that to you. That you should be strong and courageous. You should be strong and courageous. When you are strong and courageous, nobody would be able to bully you in school. Because you are strong. They know you to be a strong girl or a strong boy. So they will be scared of you. When you allow fear to creep into you, then you start to accept whatever anyone does to you. You start to accept the reality of life. But in other words, God is saying to us to be strong. Another example of being strong is, the, okay, so, okay, oh yeah, so this is a very good one. You were meant to go into the room, Supposing everyone is in the sitting room, like in the living room, and um, probably there's this movie you were seeing or something, and mommy said to you, 
Please, Fife, can you go into the room and get me my glasses? But because the room seems to be dark, the lights are not on. Then Fife gets to the corridor, peeps into the room and notices that the room is dark. Then he becomes really scared. And he's like, no, mom, I can't go in there. Really? Why can't you go in there? You cannot go in there because you are scared. That is what fear can do to you. Fear would keep you, um, keep you away. God bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.